Have you ever looked at all the gear musicians use and wonder, how does it all work? My name's Dustin and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of What's This Button Do? I'm your host Dustin and this week I am so excited to finally be able to show you the new Fidelity fretless baritone from my friends at Fidelity. Matt absolutely nailed this and, and really the whole team that went into putting this together. Um, this has been a dream come true. It's completely unique and weird and crazy. So I thought I'd take a minute just to kind of tell you about how this started. Those who have been following the channel at all know I've been working on this for about two years. Uh, and then uh, if you followed me on Instagram, you'll, you've will you seen the development of this as it's come along. But a couple of years ago, I had this crazy idea. I was listening to somebody on Instagram, uh, a guy named Disco Bebe, and he had this really cool kind of fretless guitar with a sustainer system built into it that he created. And I love the sound of it. I just love the idea behind it. And I wound up buying a fretless bass. And it had flat wound strings on. It's the first time I ever had flat wounds and I was playing around with it. I'm like, man, this would sound so good if it could just have a little more treble, a little bit more mids. So I reached out to my friend Matt over at Fidelity and I was like, Matt, man, I really want to make a fretless baritone, but I need it to do something cool. I really wanted to use sustainers because I love an Ebo. I love kind of that cool vibrating string sound. But there was nothing out there like that that, that anybody had built. Um, disco was the closest thing I had seen. Um, so kind of bounced the idea around with Matt and then, uh, reached out to, uh, Neil over at energy effects. Actually, Matt reached out to him and Neil was like, yeah, man, we could do something like this. It may take some R and D, but we'll figure this out. We'll, we'll figure out a way to do this. Um, so we came up with this concept of, we're going to do a fretless baritone neck with flat wound strings. And then in the body of the guitar, you would have a sustainer pickup that wouldn't actually pick up sound. It would just vibrate the strings and then two good single coil pickups behind that to really capture the sounds and, and, and get you that aesthetics of the actual guitar strings. Because a lot of sustainer units that are out there that I've tried kind of wash out the sound. They sound too trebly. They don't really get the richness and the, the full sound of, a, of the string sustaining. So I didn't want that. I wanted something that was a little bit more unique and, and that really, really worked. And that's what we were trying to do here. Now, those of you who also know me know I like my guitars to be unique and inspiring to me. I've always said, if you're going to make a custom guitar, make it a part of your personality. Don't worry about the resale value. Don't worry about like if you don't, if you get tired of it later on, because I really do believe if you're going to invest the money into a, a custom built guitar, it should be an extension of your personality because if it is, you will play it more. And you will be inspired by it to create other things where if you just buy an off the rack guitar, there is beauty to that. There is, it is nice to be able to just pull one off the rack and know that, you know, later on down the road, if you want to sell it, you can get some of your money out of it. But I really do find that by customizing the guitar to myself, it allows me more inspiration and to really want to pick up the guitar and play it. So that's how I do my own personal purchases. You do you. That's just how I live. So, um... One of my favorite books of all time uh, is uh, a graphic novel called Sandman by uh, the uh, uh, writer Neil Gaiman. And it's it's such a cool story and, and it shaped a lot of myself growing up. Uh, a lot of my belief system and and who I am was really uh, definitely helped out by that, by that book. Um, so I wanted to do kind of an homage to the Sandman, especially because the music that I'm writing with this guitar is going to be somewhat based on the Sandman series. Um, so... I went back to, to Matt and I said, man, I really want to do something kind of cool, like maybe a street art kind of thing. And he was like, oh, I know the artist. So over in London, there is an artist named Miss E. And I was not aware of their work at this point in time, but after researching them, oh my gosh, they are absolutely amazing. I'm going to put a little link to their Instagram down below here, but you got to go check out their work. It is phenomenal. But what they did is took three of my favorite lines from uh, The Sandman, uh, Death is the High Cost of Living, um, Love Takes Hostages, and Dream Shape the World. And what they did is literally graffiti the guitar up with those quotes and some cool graphics, and then took my favorite character from the series, Matthew the Raven, because I love a good raven, and they spray painted the back with the Raven. It's such a cool style. This is actually done in acrylics, not spray paint, but um, such a 
killer, killer look. Beautiful finish on here. The neck is insane, and the oh, the action is killer, killer, killer. And just every little detail, down to the comics on the on the pickup guards down here, taking some of my favorite scenes from the book and putting incorporating it in there. Matt went above and beyond himself. He even put a little checker pattern in here because he knows I love checkered guitars uh, and the checker design. So just absolutely blew it out of the water. But that's enough of me rambling and, and gushing over this thing. Let's hop over to the board and hear some actual sounds from it because that's what's really gonna blow you away. Okay, so today I thought I'd start off by showing you just some of the basics of the guitar, how it works, uh, some of the functionality. So first of all, let's talk about a fretless guitar. So you notice up close here, there's no frets on the guitar itself. Now, if you ever go this route, I highly recommend getting a guitar neck that it has fret markers on it. That way, at least you know where you're playing at and you can kind of have a visual idea to, to let you know because until you get your ears trained really, really well on figuring out what note you're playing, you really do need a little bit of help because the fretless guitar, I think it is the easiest way to train your ears to listen for in tune notes and out of tune notes because it forces you to find that sound, to slide into the sound that you want and get your fingers in the right position. But these little markers on the neck really help you to do that efficiently and to, to know exactly where you're playing and what notes you're playing. Now, the other thing that, that we incorporated into here is this pickup system. So I'm gonna show you how this all works as we start off. So first of all, I'm gonna let you hear the clean tone with it. I don't have the sustainer engaged at all. What I'm just gonna use is my switch up here to let you hear a little bit of the sound of what a fretless guitar sounds like because it is different especially when you have these uh, flat wound strings on there so what you'll notice first of all it's definitely a more percussive style string it almost has a bassier sound to it. and you hear how my finger is sliding up and down the neck like that, what that's doing essentially is just allowing me to find the in two note. And if you mess up, watch what happens when I, see how you hear I went above the pitch and I got too far? So what a fretless does really does help you find that in tune note and really know, okay, yeah, that sounds right, I'm playing in tune. But it also gives the option if you wanna have a sound, maybe you wanna create an out of tune sound a little bit and go up a little bit on your pitch, this is unforgiving, so you can do that. You can get into some crazy sounds. You basically have every note available to you on the fretboard, every little microtonal sound. So it is really cool from that aspect is you can do whatever you want with a fretless to get it to sound really cool. Now on here, you have a pickup selector so we can change. We can try to change if they're in serials or parallel. And then if we put them in parallel there, kind of gives it a little more washed out sound. So by having this little rotary style here, we can really select what we want to make the pickup sound like. I like it in regular mode. I love that sound. I just think it sounds really, really cool. Now you can still play chords on a fretless as well. It is a little more difficult because you got to stretch your fingers out and find the correct note everywhere you go. So you can still do it. You just gotta be really careful with your cording fingers exactly how you're gonna do it and making sure you've got everything in the right place or some note of your chord is gonna sound weird. See how that sounds just a little bit off? My fingers aren't right in the right place to create, play that chord. So I do like on fretless, I, I say go more for single note stuff or dual note rather than trying to do full big chords. Triads are really good to use on there rather than trying to play them all at once. Pick them a little bit, slide into things. It makes it a little bit easier, especially when you're first starting out on a fretless. Well, let's face it, none of this is why any of you are here watching this video. You all want to know about the sustainer system that NRG created. And truly, that is the magic of this guitar. And it is something amazingly special that I really want to deep dive into. So the idea behind this is to give you a sustain unit that can individually sustain strings. So underneath here, you have these really powerful magnets. And as I turn each one of these on, it causes that magnet to vibrate. Now over here, we have two controls. We have a gain or intensity knob that's gonna turn up as we go. It causes the vibrations to increase and also creates almost like a fuzzy gain type sound, like you're bowing the stream, but it's, it gives it a really, really interesting heavy gain sound. And then the tone knob will allow you to increase the brightness on the string. When you have both of these maxed out, it can cause kind of a harsh grating sound. 
Now you can still incorporate your volume and your tone knob from the guitar itself too, to help smooth things out. So for instance, let's play a little riff here. I'm just gonna go into the sustainer system itself. I am going to play you one of my favorite little riffs that I've been messing around with, and I might even show you with this with drums, but I'm gonna turn on the high E string. Now what you'll notice is as I bring this blue knob up, it's gonna start sustaining that note. You can hear it's almost like a violin bow is droning across the top of it. And as I bring up the tone, you can kind of hear it come up a little. Now the neat thing about this is if I touch that string, it instantly kills that sound. So it will completely kind of deaden it and remove it. And then when I let go again, it goes back to sustaining the string again. Now if I want to sustain two strings at once, I can turn on like both of these and have that entire note steady. In fact, what's really kind of cool is if you set up the tuning on your guitar, you can actually do some open tuning on here and turn on like three notes that would make an actual chord together and have them droning a chord sound, which is really, really cool in and of itself. Where this becomes really fun is if we get into a mix. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn on a drum track and then I'm gonna turn on this high E string drone just so you can kind of hear what this sounds like in the mix when you're using it because it's really, really freaking cool. Okay, here we go. See how that drone just kind of comes over the top here? And when I touch it with my palm, you're gonna hear it mute every now and then. So what do you think? Killer, right? I mean, this thing is, it's mind-numbing. It's not for everyone. I know 
I, I, the, the point of this video is not to get you all to rush out and buy a fretless guitar. It's not because I know fretless guitar, it's harder to play. I'm, I'm going to be struggling with it myself and I'm the one inspired by this thing. It, it's going to be awesome, but it is going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of nuance. And I do think it'll make me a better guitar player starting to train your ear to pick up those notes. That's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to show you that if you can find inspiration in the tools that you use, be it a guitar, a keyboard, a pedal, whatever it is, if it inspires you, you are going to get creative and you are going to create new music and you are going to take yourself to a whole nother level and want to push yourself and push those boundaries even further because you're inspired, because you're impassioned by something. So I urge all of you to find that passion, find that inspiration in your tools, in the things that you use to create your music and let that passion come out and let it be inspired by these devices. These are, they are tools, they are pedals and crazy little gear that we all use day to day. But I find that if you really listen to them and let them tell you where to take your music, you will find a whole new inspiration and a new music that you've never ever seen before. And that's what I love so much about gear and trying new things and experimentation. It just opens up a whole new world of musicality that I think this generation really is coming into with effects and with processors and all these crazy things that we're seeing out there. I think we've only begun to scratch the surface of what we can do with music with these things. So I hope that this will be that next level for me. And I hope that this helps you find inspiration in taking your gear and your creativity and letting your passion come out. If you have any questions, any comments, please leave them down in the, in the links below. As always, I want to thank my friends over at Palin for uh, hosting me on their channel and letting me share crazy things like this with you all. Um, please, please, please go give them a, a follow on their site and, and take a look at them right now. They've got some really cool stuff for sale over there. And please, if you get a chance, go follow me on Instagram. Those who haven't been, uh, you've kind of missed out on some of the build co uh, content as we created this guitar. Um, but please go give me a like over there and you'll see lots of crazy upcoming things and more links to demos and all sorts of things like that. Over the next couple of weeks we're going to be checking out a couple of new pedals that I picked up at NAMM um, that are just absolutely insane so I hope you'll join me back here for those and please if you've got your own inspiration you've got your own gear that you've enjoyed heck if you've made some music with gear that's inspired you feel free put a link down here below in the comments I'd love to hear from you I'd love to hear some of your music I'd love to hear some of your experiences in, in customizing your own gear uh, be it ordering something custom or just adding you know cool pick guard or a cool guitar strap to give, get you some uh, inspiration in your gear so please share your stories down below. I'd love to hear them. Well, thank you so much as always for coming out and being a part of this community. You are so wonderful and I cannot thank you enough. I look forward to seeing all of you next week. Take care and have a wonderful week.